ultimate MK podcast. Nailed it. Fucking nailed it. We nailed it. We only do it every week. I don't have it figured out by now. <laughs> You'd think, but sometimes you just watch the clock go by and don't clap. <laughs> Look, it's been a, it's been a hectic day. It's been a yeah, man. You've been having a time. What with F one controversies and shit. Yeah, and also just like a mix of controversies in my team not doing particularly well. Yeah, but you're still happy for the the winners. Yeah, no, I think yeah. no matter who kind of came out on top of that one today, would have deserved it. It's just now we get to argue about uh, whether or not regulations are being clearly enforced and potentially going to court about it instead of just enjoying the fast cars sure, and yeah. the nice boys that drive them. Now we have to do all this shit. <sighs> That's the kind of stuff that people really love about motorsports is the the politics and the bureaucracy behind the scenes. That's what Speed Racer was all about. Yeah, it's it's the rules and the unclear enforcement and management by the race director. Totally. That's what we all love. But hey, man, you don't get into a T180 to be a driver. You do it because you're driven. <laughs> That's from Speed Racer. I've never seen that movie. <laughs> Corey. Neil. Been a couple weeks now since we've watched any Mortal Kombat Legacy. We're kicking off uh, Legacy 2 now. Yes, we are. Um, That's what it's called on the big fancy title card. They're like, what should we call this? Oh, man, how are we going to differentiate this from Mortal Kombat Legacy? And then some absolute brain genius at Warner Brothers is like, let's just fucking slap two ones on there. Hell yeah, man. It's a reference to Mortal Kombat 2. That's how you differentiate Mortal Kombat from Mortal yeah, Kombat that's 2. Yeah, that's what the number 2 is a reference to. The Roman numeral aspect is. It's it's a... <laughs> yeah, the, 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 I love the idea. I love the idea. I love the idea that literal ancient history has been has been diluted to the point where somebody is walking around out in public and sees the Roman numeral for two and points at it and goes, just like Mortal Kombat. That's what I did as a kid, except with the uh, <laughs> with the Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's, that's two. I know that because of Ninja Turtles. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. Woo. This shit's educational. You can learn stuff. <laughs> From movies uh, and video games. Public schools are pretty good down there. <laughs> we gotta figure out what we're fucking doing today. Our brains are not dialed in. We're not in the drift yeah. at all. So like, like real we're talk. We're in the draft. We had the we yeah we are not drift compatible right now. Um, we had that week where we didn't end up releasing anything new, just the uh, orb supercut, and then we had a, a little little battle about the Taven episode that we recorded. Uh, last week, but yeah, we're a little we're a little out of sync here, aren't we? Yeah, and I can think of yeah. only one man uh, sufficiently capable to bring us back together. Kevin Tancharoan. Sure, I would have said yes to any name that you said from these two episodes. To be completely honest with you, <laughs> only Kevin Tancharoan can bring us back together to talk Mortal Kombat Legacy Two. Also, part of the reason is there was an actor's name that I was gonna say, but I forgot how to say his last name, and I wanted to Google it, but I didn't want to hear have people hear me typing it to try to get the joke right, so I just didn't say anything. We talking? We talking Mark DeCascos? You fucking know. It. Yeah, we are. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Keep that in. This is a fucking dumpster fire. We talking? Uh... Let's just take that again from the top. We're talking Mark DeCascos? Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, I'll fix it in editing. Or I won't. Doesn't matter. Oh, this is a this is a whole fucking this is a show. Huh? <laughs> Speaking of shows, huh? Mortal Kombat Legacy 2. How about these episode titles, man? We are talking episodes one and two of Mortal Kombat Legacy 2. Uh, Liu Kang and Kung Lao reunite in Macau, and the cause of Liu Kang's fall is revealed. That is what the titles are on IMDb, and I think HBO Max. They're a little, they're truncated on Steam if you're watching it that way. <laughs> I gotta be honest, Neil. I want to, I want to be upfront about this right away. Yeah, did you watch the wrong episodes? Because there's other Liu Kang and Kung Lao ones on Steam. Nope, that would have been real funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hate that. 
the titles? I hate these titles so much because it's already like I'm already only watching like six minutes of a video. And half of it is reading the title. If you don't think I can sit and wait to figure out what this is, like how bad is, are our attention spans nowadays? Right. Are the boomers right? That, I mean. Are they? No. Maybe. But yeah, they. I mean, they could have just gone like Liu Kang and Kung Lao parts one and two like they did in season one, right? Oh, but they do that. They they did they did that already. Oh, they did that at the end too, right? Yeah. But that could have been parts three and four, right? Could, it could have been. We're gonna have to take that up with Kevin T. I don't know how this is so fucking complicated. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, Tancher Rowan, Tancher Rowan. I was hoping you would play this. Shout out to Kevin. Should we just uh, get right into this? You want to give uh, any? I think this is the only reliable way this podcast will actually get off the ground. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to just get right into this. I think we'll let's save opinions. You know, sometimes I like to ask you up front what you thought of the thing. Let's save opinions for the end, unless we get a real sense of how you feel from the Corey corner. Instead of an opinion, instead of me giving an opinion, can I just make a statement? Sure. Yeah, you can make a statement. Can it be an F1 related statement that has nothing to do with the 20 minutes I spent talking to you before this podcast? Yeah, it can be anything you want, buddy. Congratulations to Yuki Sonoda on finishing fourth. Good job, buddy. Hell yeah. <laughs> you needed that, pal. Shout out to the boys. There's like four people out there who are going to be really excited about that. You you know. Do you think any of them listen to this? Uh, <laughs> They might. <laughs> if not, we got to get this in their ears. Greg will know what I'm talking about. Shout out to Greg. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna explain both of these episodes as one big thing. Yeah, that's that's the way. Because to do it. in total, it is like. Are you already over in the Cory corner? I thought we were. You better you better ask me to get over there. Tally ho! Welcome to the Cory corner. Okay. Uh, now we are. Um. This is like 14 total minutes of content, As so usual. it's not it's not that hard to explain in one go, so we're going to do that. Uh, it effectively is just the story and then a flashback, and then a flash forward. A flashback, a return, and then the start of something. Kind of in the... I don't know, who knows? Just go, Let's just do it. Karaoke. Heard of it? I have. Good. Because it's happening in this bar in Macau. Some of the shots of the skyline looked kind of weird. Don't th worry about it. It's fine. There's a man. He's singing karaoke. Doing a pretty good job singing about like a mother without a child or whatever that song was about. <laughs> um, and there's a man sitting at the bar uh, just getting absolutely uh, shit housed. Yeah. Uh, taking a bunch of shots, just getting real riled up, looking pretty sad, has his mm -hmm. hood up. Yeah. Looking kind of fucked up, looking like he's not in a good zone. He's in real and, uh, Jin Kazama from Tekken mode. He is that's actually an extremely astute comparison. Yeah. Yeah. He's in huge uh Jin Kazama from Tekken mode. That's what I'm gonna start calling it anytime I'm like in my feelings about something. And you got your hood up. You gotta have your hood yeah. up is the important sorry, thing. Sorry, sorry, mom and dad, I can't talk right now. I'm in Jin Kazama from Tekken mode. <laughs> if we talk, I will if have to If you even are you. my mom and dad. <laughs> this Going into that mode makes you want to fight your dad. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, shout out to my dad who listens sometimes, apparently. Yeah, shout out to Neil's dad. You might want to skip that Taven one. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe maybe you just like skip the last like five minutes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can I continue? Okay, let's please do please continue. I'm a gang say. of well, not even a, we don't know they're a gang of ruffians yet. A group of people walk into this bar. My note says rowdy karaoke gang. They're not even that rowdy yet. It's just a group of people going to a bar walk into a bar. Mm-hmm. And they sit down, and they're like, oh, you should go do karaoke. Ha ha. And then the bald guy is like, you're right. I yeah, will. karaoke boss. And uh, he goes up, and he's like, hey, man, I, it's my turn to karaoke. I'm going to sing. <laughs> I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing What's a he gonna song. What's he going to sing? By, uh, I actually don't know what the song is called, which is why I'm stalling. Um, 
Is it just called Relax? What is it called? I believe it's just called Relax. By, uh, is it Frankie Goes to Hollywood? Frankie Goes to Hollywood. How could I forget? Um, and <laughs> Jin Kazama from Tekken gets up and he goes, hey man, please don't sing that song. Right. Totally normal thing to do in a bar. And the karaoke singer is like, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kick the shit out of you for saying, having the audacity to say that to me. Don't you know who me and my friends are? We're the karaoke combat gang. And all we do <laughs> is karaoke and fight each other and fight others. So we're going to fight you now. And in response to that, uh hooded figure throws him completely over the bar and into the wall and a bunch of bottles and whatnot and a violent fight breaks out yes uh with some pretty gnarly shit in it involving a pool table yeah Um, but our boy uh who seems to love getting punched in the face who we discover is Liu kang oh shit is getting just absolutely wailed on and in walks in someone in a big hat but that doesn't really narrow down who it's gonna be (laughs) Unless yeah. unless you read the title of the episode. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be honest with you, Neil. There was a split second where I was like, oh, is that Raiden? Oh, shit. And then I was like, oh, wait, of course not. Cause, but this is not a Kung Lao like you've ever seen him before. No, uh, the hat does not have a visible blade on it, for no. starters. Oh, um, I've got a big theory, boys, about that. He's also in uh, white flowing monk's robes. Yeah, he's in like... Shaolin robes and is also Mark DeCascos <laughs> and is also Mark DeCascos which feels like an important detail it is a very important detail Mark DeCascos from the island of Dr. Moreau right his most iconic role yes and other stuff we'll get into it yeah John Wick um it's probably where most people have most recently seen that guy yeah I, dude he's so uh, his IMDB he's so fucking busy man um it's cool and Kung Lao's like, hey, it's me. I'm going to save you from this guy by throwing my big hat at him. Uh, and then they have a discussion about, like, Liu Kang leaving the temple and them being at odds for him wanting to go, like, live a normal life and Kung Lao not following him and seeing, seemingly being at odds with, like, this traditional yeah. institution for wanting to make that decision for himself. And then, flashback to... <laughs> I can't believe this. Ten years Flat, prior. Flashback to ten years prior where Luke Kang is a chef in a diner singing Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood so loud yeah, that his is. fiance's dad, who owns the diner, tells him to stop singing. Then, immediately and for no reason, he pulls an engagement ring out of his apron pocket and says, Hey, should I tell your dad that we want to get married? And then she goes, No, don't lose that ring. Put it away. And then they make out robbers storm into the diner <laughs> yes they do they they try to they go to take all the money and luke hangs comes out of the kitchen he's like what are the robbers in here and um he's like hey go, hey hey guys guys relax don't do it and uh for no real reason uh the other robber both of which are armed with guns uh in broad fucking daylight with in no broad masks daylight on. with no masks uh covid or otherwise um takes his prospective fiance hostage and uh during a cut to black there is a gunshot and it is implied that she dies because he has the ring on a chain that he wears on his neck uh presumably to not lose it cut to um the future from that moment (laughs) um Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to a restaurant and there's a a monk going downstairs and downstairs is kung lao's like shaolin students i guess that's where the shaolin they're like leading a prayer they're getting ready to send kung lao off in the basement of a restaurant i need to make that the clearest i can possibly (laughs) make it i think it's kind of dope their whole zone is in the basement of a restaurant well this part we don't know you haven't seen the whole thing i'm i'm sorry i'm gonna let you finish uh and then he's uh got some some stones on his head or some incense on his head maybe frankly i don't know and i don't want to mm-hmm. sound like an idiot for not knowing so i'm just going to kind of leave it um and kung lao goes outside and he's like oh fuck there's a slightly unusual amount of garbage in this alley <laughs> seems like a perfectly reasonable place to make all the dumpsters <laughs> float in the air <laughs> i don't think that was his 
thought process. <laughs> and then <laughs> as I do that, I'm going to turn to dust like I got Thanos snapped and arrive somewhere else in a different outfit. Um, And a bunch of other people are going to arrive. We'll get there. Yeah, we will. And maybe Liu Kang shows up in a yeah. bit of an unusual way. Yeah, we got to hit that. We got to talk about that. Do you want to go over to the uh, Neil Nook? Uh, yeah. All right. Hey, Corey. Give... Have we done that every... Welcome to the Neil Nook. It's Gucci. What were you saying? Um, nah, it's fine. We have not done that every time, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first thing I want to say up top, this is just a little bit of uh, quote-unquote trivia. Corey, you alerted me to this. There is a prelude episode that is, I think, a Steam exclusive. It's fucking nothing. It's 90 seconds long. Uh, It's somebody cool talking. The only important information to know from that is that in this universe, Mortal Kombat happens every 10 years. So that, that, that 10 number is important, right? That's more frequently than we've seen Mortal Kombat tournaments happen in, like, the Threshold universe. Or really in the games universe. Like, I think it's supposed to be, like, every 50 years, right? Something like that. Once um, a generation, approximately. More or less. But then, but in Legacy, it happens every 10 years. And in the and in the last tournament, Liu Kang was victorious. That's just one... That's all you need to know from that prelude. Yeah, I guess the Elder Gods just also use, like, the decimal, the normal decimal system. Mm -hmm. And it's not, like, base 12 or whatever over there. Maybe in, uh, maybe that's why we use that calendar is because of the Elder Gods in Mortal Kombat. And one of their names Uh is Greg, which is why it's called the Gregorian calendar. Totally. Shout out to Greg. This episode was directed by Kevin Tancharoan. Uh, thing I saw on Twitter, Kevin Tancharoan is directing an episode of The Book of Boba Fett. That's pretty sick. Oh, for for real? Yeah. yeah. Wow. He also directed a bunch of episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's done a bunch of stuff. I don't know how deep we really got on him. Uh, I just back... don't remember, which is probably why I sounded maybe more surprised than I should yeah. have. No, dude's, dude's crushing it. Uh, these episodes were written by Josh Bazer and Marshall Johnson, who are both well known for writing the episodes of Mortal Kombat Legacy season two. And, uh, that's kind of it. Cool. (laughs) We've got, as we mentioned already, Mark DeCascos as Kung Lao. Sick as hell. Perfect casting, in my opinion. Dude's been Oh, I could not, (laughs) I could not disagree more based on what we watched, but okay. Really? Well, this uh, is a different, yeah. but this is such a different version of Kung Lao than we're used to. I know, and I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it, but basically, no. all they're doing is well. All right, I'm going to hold on to that when we talk about it. <laughs> all right, uh, Mark Dacascos was Eric Draven in uh, a very good TV show called The Crow: Stairway to Heaven. He, of course, was in the Double Dragon movie and uh, John Wick Three: Brotherhood of the Wolf, Island of Doctor Moreau. I mentioned, and dude was in Wing Commander Four: The Price of Freedom. Is there an orb in that one? I don't think so. Well, that's their fucking loss. I don't I know right? for sure. Is that the one I own? I think I own that one. I'll play it later and I'll let you know. We've got Brian T as Liu Kang. I know him best as DK, the Drift King from Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Oh, is he? My secret favorite movie. So I've only seen that movie like once. So I don't remember specifically yeah. who that guy is. He's the bad guy, quote unquote. He's Sonny Chiba's nephew. He's the one that uh, Lucas I Black I, is. The more you describe about the movie, the less I realize I remember. You didn't even know Sonny Chiba was in it, did you? No. <laughs> R.I.P. Sonny Chiba, one of the right. greats. I did not realize that he was in it. Yeah. I've, I've straight up seen that movie like maybe one and a half times. Yeah. Okay. So he, he was the antagonist in that one, if that helps. I, I call him the bad guy. He was the antagonist. Doesn't matter. He was the drift king of the movie. Yeah. That's why they call him DK. He's the drift king. DK. He was Drift also in King. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. He played Shredder in that. And he's Noburo in The Wolverine. And he's also in, like, I think Chicago Fire and Chicago PD, more of those Chicago shows that seemed all film in Vancouver, maybe. I don't fucking know. It's because it's too expensive to shoot near the bean, so nobody films in Chicago. I also think that this guy, this is also great casting. Yeah, the Liu Kang casting is great. Smoldering charisma is what I'm going to call it. (laughs) 
I'd watch this guy paint a fucking house. I'd watch this guy pay somebody else to paint a fence. <laughs> that little rascal getting out of his getting out of his chores. Brought to you by Pabst Blue Ribbon. I'm only going to talk about one more actor from these. I know we got introduced to a whole bunch of people at the end. But most of them didn't do anything yet. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about them as their episodes come up. So the last thing that I have to, I just have to, I can't sit on it anymore, man, is that we've got Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa back as Shang Tsung. This is pretty fucking tight. I like how we, we just said, we're not going to talk about the people who didn't really do anything. And then you're like, but we are going to shout out the boy. We are going to shout out. <laughs> for having one line of dialogue. But he also narrated that prologue episode that I talked about. Oh, was about. that him? I didn't. Yeah, I, I genuinely didn't notice. Totally. Yeah, got to talk about him. Of course, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa, famous for playing Tai Waisei on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, season one, episode 10, Sweet and Sour Victory. Is that just a joke you make all the time now? <laughs> it's the most famous role, clearly. <laughs> Uh, also, of course, Shang Tsung in the Mortal Kombat 95 movie, uh, the antagonist in the pilot of Raven, and he's on Man in the High Castle with Bruce Locke. It's the Shangulation, etc. Good to see you, Carrie. You know, the most people probably saw Sabrina the Teenage Witch out of all the things you just said. Also, he watches our Instagram stories sometimes, and that's pretty he cool. Does. Oh my god, he does. Yeah, he does. Which is super weird. <laughs> I'm going to call him. I'm going to go ahead and call him friend of the show. Friend of the show, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa. I'm going to go ahead and call him on the phone because <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> That's it for the Neil Nook this week. We'll dive. There's another uh, brilliant casting choice I am having to stop myself from talking about. Why do you have to not talk about it? Because it's because I want to talk about it when it's important to the show. Mm. Fuck it. I'll just say it here. Casper Van Dien is Johnny Cage, and that is the most perfect casting that's ever happened. Neil, I'm, I have something to say to you, and God we'll address it, it when Johnny Cage is more important. And I'm so sorry, no. but fuck you, the you're one, wrong. The fuck one you, thing that wrong. he, the one thing that he said, or two things that he said, I hate, I hated it, I hated it so much. He said one, he said one thing, and he, I was instantly, and I know this is like probably what they were going for, but I instantly was like, I, 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 I just didn't like, I didn't, I didn't want more of that. Well, we don't have to. T- all right, you know what. That's all. That's all. We're, you don't have to keep this judge. in if you want. I wanted to make a bit out of it, but I also genuinely was kind of like, oh, that's kind of annoying. We're not going to judge Casper Van Dien on the writing. Also, I feel like he had one line. Stryker had more lines, and Stryker said the dumb shit. Okay. I mean, I stand by what I said. I still... I. What if I told you I also didn't like that? <laughs> I, that's fair. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I just think in a vacuum, Casper Van Dien as Johnny Cage is solid casting, but yeah. Sure. I also just think I, I definitely know less about Casper Van Dien than you. I'll tell you that for free. Anyway, man, what did you think of this overall? Uh, so you, okay, so we're answering that question now, huh? We are answering that question now. The what did you think question? Yeah. And this is about There's Mortal not a Kombat. whole lot to go beat by beat by. I mean, you beat by beat Mortal by Kombat beat by Mortal Kombat Legacy. This is Mortal Kombat Legacy 2. Yes. First two episodes. Yeah, and what did I think of them? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So far, right? Because we got the big reveal at the end. We got the big reveal of the the island, the tournament setting, Shang Tsung's <sighs> island. That's pretty sick. Uh, down on his luck, Liu Kang. Uh, okay. This presents a handful of interesting ideas. <laughs> okay, but uh, Kevin Tangerone is back on his shit again, isn't he? I don't like phrasing it that way because that's mean. <laughs> okay, I'll t- I'll cut that but, out. <laughs> but also, yes. <laughs> um I did not care for this in the slightest. Wow, dude. And in fact, it it was the tease at the end that really sucked the air out of the room. <laughs> I got to be honest. Really? Um I I uh the fact that we're getting the that we're getting the tournament you but you saw how you saw how it looks right yeah yeah it looks sick what are you talking about this is gonna be an interesting couple of episodes Hell yeah, I it think. Is. um so <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know um i i'm so excited i don't even know where to start because i i don't i don't know um okay so let's just start with the first chunk sure the first episode chunk of it um I like the setup fine. I think for the format, the setup is actually a little bit slow. 
Because it's like, you've already split this into two parts, and you've only got like eight minutes, yeah. and we're spending a lot of time on this karaoke bit. <laughs> right, um, but, it was a cool, but it was a cool fight. There's a dude got his head slammed into the pool table so much, one of his teeth fell out, and I really felt that, because, you know. Because you, ve- you have fucked up teeth problems right now with some Skittles and shit? Exactly, yeah. Pool tables and Skittles, the same thing. I will say, like, the the choreography of that action scene, totally fine, right? Yeah. Good, competent stuff well put together the show looks fine um my problems are more in what the goals of this appear to be and like this interpretation of it because obviously we we know we know kevin as a man who is not want to just sort of take a he doesn't bunt you know he's not swinging to get on first base he swings for the fucking fences every time Every time. Yeah. And I respect that. However, <laughs> I see this version of Kung Lao, and I see the way this dichotomy between him and Liu Kang is being set up, and sure. I see how that's visually being presented in terms of like how they look and how like blandly binary, like one of them's in black, one of them's in white, one of them's in nice robes, one of them's in normal clothes. Um, and also just the way this is attempting to integrate itself into the real world Mm -hmm. in a way that is, I think, attempting to be more organic, like with the, the temple and the restaurant basement or whatever. Yeah. I, I just don't like it. Huh. This is not, I don't care for this. And there's, I'm worried that if this is the baseline and it's less, um, tonally divergent across its runtime than the previous season was that there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to get me over that because when more characters arrive at the end yeah and you get a taste of what they will be like yeah i like recoiled i was like (laughs) get me the fuck out of here really i i'm just not interested and um i do want to say that while I do not think Mark DeCascos is doing bad, I am going to stand by my point that I find that casting really jarring, and for Kung huh. Lao, I don't like it. <laughs> See, I'm on board with it, obviously. I think that he did a fine job. I like the setup they're doing here, because it, it, as that prologue established, you know, Liu Kang already won Mortal Kombat 10 years ago, right? Right. And then he, I don't know, uh, fell in love with a girl. And he made the decision. This that... is story of. <laughs> I was going for the white stripes, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and he made the decision that the great Kung Lao didn't make in conquest, right? Where he was like, do I walk away from my destiny after winning mortal Kombat to live a normal life or not? Right. And that's what he did. He, he did the thing. The great Kung Lao didn't in that show. He walked away to have his life with his, his gen. I don't know her it name. Didn't go well. <laughs> I couldn't even find a credit for her on IMDb. That's not to say it's not there. I just couldn't find it. I'll amend this next episode if I do. Um, but yeah. And then the same, the sort of the same outcome happens, right? Where uh, his lady friend dies. And then he's, instead of uh, doing the great Kung Lao thing and like returning to his duty to to be Mortal Kombat guy, he like just get, starts getting drunk and getting in bar fights and getting mad about here and relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood all the time. I think that that's. I think that that was an interesting In exploration of the character, honestly. And again, I would like to reiterate my initial point, which I said in a snippy way because I don't know. I'm trying to be funny. The ideas are interesting. That uh, and more specifically, that idea is interesting. Sure. Uh, which I say because I'm not particularly interested in this iteration of Kung Lao at all. Right. Um. Well, but I am. I'm just not. I'm okay. sorry, but, but I, think, um, I think the fact that Liu Kang left the temple has now put Kung Lao in the position of having to be the temple's champion in Mortal Kombat, right? Because historically, he's been like the the alt, right? He's yeah. been the sub, the substitute, specifically. Um, and now he's got it. Now he's got to take on that role of being Earth's champion because Liu Kang is like, "Fuck this! I'm not fighting for the temple anymore." You know. Yeah, I think it can go. I think it. I think it's gonna go places. I don't remember. I, I've only watched this once. I don't remember anything about it. And like so. I said, the ideas are interesting. I just look at it 
I watch it and I'm like, not this way for me. Like as just, I guess there's something about my taste or preferences that at first glance is just not jiving with this. Okay. Um, and I don't know what to do about that. And because this is fairly light on like, uh, these first two episodes are fairly light. I'll just put it that way. Not in terms of tone per se, but like there's only so much to get to for us is what I mean. Sure. But um, what it kind of comes down to is what I'm worried about is like not being able to get on the train now that it's left the station. Okay. Um, I don't know how this wins me back over, which is what my concern is. Um, because despite everything in terms of like how it's being put together or visually presented, or even the editing is kind of, you know, it's fine. Like, nothing is bad, but I am just not, I just, <laughs> I don't, I'm not there with it. Uh, okay. And I don't know how to remedy that. <laughs> uh, right. And I don't have faith based on the tease that the show is going to do anything that will get me there. That's how I will phrase it. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> I gotta be honest, the tease yeah i wanted to like get up and walk out of my room wow dude the, I, the, by the tease you mean the stuff at the end where we see all the other fighters yes the okay. only thing that i but liked in that is that why? luke hang ends up on the bad guy side yeah let's go through that right now okay i just want to talk about what we see because after kung lao like zips out of the uh dumpster alley Oh my, we have to talk. Can we talk about that really quick, actually? Sorry. Yeah, we can talk about that. There's um, a great joke Because visually, in that. that effect is not great. And yeah. uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> the fact that, like, Kung Lao's just, like, you know, monk in the big city. And he's just sure. walking around. And uh, there's just an alley with uh, a man with a bottle sleeping in a box. Yes. And there is some garbage strewn across it. And there are two dumpsters. And he does some hand motions of some kind, and th everything starts floating off the ground. Yeah. And then he starts slowly turning to dust and flies and like disappears. Sure. And then what the guy, the, fuck? the guy, and then the dumpsters hit the ground, and the and the the drunk. He's like, like, "What am I drinking?" But it's yeah. But he doesn't do the classic like look at the bottle and throw the bottle away. Like, oh man, I've had no. Too he's much. like, no, this is awesome. He's like, this fucking rules. I'm having another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Lao is encouraging me to drink more. He says to no one in particular. But um, <laughs> I mean, like, what the, what the fuck was that? And like, that's how you get to Mortal Kombat, man. Yeah, but why does he show up in a completely different outfit? Because he's ready for battle now, man. He's on the island. How did he change clothes? It's battle time. Who cares? It's fucking battle time. He His <laughs> arcana got awoken. Why does everybody show up in like black goop mist? Maybe Noob Saibot teleported them? Maybe. We'll have to find out. All right. So, uh, Oh my God. That scene is so funny. Oh my God. I love that. Dude lands on, on Shang Tsung's island. This is Shang Tsung's island, right? Uh, Presumably. <laughs> it's like a black sand beach and... I think it looks cool. And then like the little shots, we're not going to see a ton of the island. It's not going to be obviously as well done as it was in Mortal Kombat 95. But, uh, you know, you've got like your Mortal Kombat flags strewn around. They're kind of tore up. The place is kind of in ruins. We're going to learn a little bit more about that in the next episode. But uh, yeah, he lands on the beach and then a bunch of other warriors start popping in behind him. Did you know who they all were? I think so. I think uh, it's it's Striker, Johnny Cage, and Kenshi. And there's somebody else. Sub Zero. I thought there was also somebody else other than that. Also, is Sub Zero the guy who shows up in all black then for some reason? Yeah, Striker, Johnny Cage, Kenshi, Sub Zero, and, and Kung Lao. And they all meet there in front of Raiden, right? New Raiden, recast Raiden. Yeah. Also, I got to say, really, really quick, my gut reaction to the Raiden casting was also, uh uh. What? At least not a white dude this time. Uh, you know, that's true, and I will give credit for that. <laughs> Fair enough. You haven't seen any of them do anything yet. You're so judgmental. I know, but what I'm saying is the first impression the show is giving me is bad. So then we cut over to the other side of the island and we see Shang Tsung as played by Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa. Did you have problems with that recasting? Did you have problems with that casting choice too, Corey? No, I thought it was fine. Okay, good. 
Uh, and then we see on the outworld side, we see Melina and Kitana pop in. We see Scorpion arrive. We see Ermac show up of all the people. The trick is not, basically none of these people said anything, so I had less to cringe at. <laughs> and then the final outworld warrior appears, and it's fucking Liu Kang. Liu Kang is in Mortal Kombat fighting on outworld side because he's just so mad at Earth and Earthrealm. Because everybody it abandoned is, him. Yeah, I'm cu- I'm curious to find out how he was convinced to do that. Yeah, I believe there is an episode that covers that. Yeah, because you'd think yeah. if he was out, right, like he would just just be out, not participate. <laughs> sure, you'd think. Because Kung Lao didn't do anything to him in their initial meeting to really imply that he would be so upset that he actively wanted to go against them in violent combat. Yeah, there's some shit that obviously we didn't see. Like, Liu Kang's carrying yeah. some kind of a... Like, he didn't just walk away from the Shaolin Temple. He Something else happened where he's like, I needed you guys the... When when I needed you guys the most, you weren't there for me. You refused to help me, right? Yeah. And Kung Lao's kind of responding like, hey, we respected your decision to leave. You need to respect our decision too, which I don't know what their decision was to just, like, write him the fuck the off. The decision to, you know, like, stay out of his life, presumably. Sure. Because that's probably what he asked for. And then when that was his support network and he needed it, they were like, sorry, man, you said you told us to fuck off. Yeah. But does that mean they really cared in the first place? I don't know. I'm not I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying that's probably what it was. Like, I think so. They're like, no, if you're going to go have a girlfriend, you can't hang out in this boys club of Shaolin monks anymore. No girls allowed. Virgins only. That sign won't stop me because I can't read. <laughs> man. You just hate. You fucking hate. Can't. Well, okay, okay, okay. I'm wrapping okay. my head no, around. No, no, it. no, no, no. Hang I just, on, hang on. like, cause here, cause here, I was like, I got psyched. I was like, oh fuck yeah, that's right. This is all tournament shit, right? Kenshi is here. Pretty rad that they got Kenshi on the roster for this. In my opinion, I gotta be honest. I don't, I don't, I don't have a huge. I don't. <laughs> so we're running into the same problem that happens when when you haven't played any Mortal Kombat games. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's all Which right. Which is that I'm like, okay, Kenshi's here cool yeah it <laughs> like doesn't mean you it, know it, yeah it doesn't have to mean anything to you like it's yeah. seriously and i'm open to being like you know uh persuaded um and i don't want to say i i didn't like viscerally hate it like i was gonna puke all over my keyboard like but the bottom line is the first impression being made here it didn't tickle your brain it's not positive um i don't think it's like horrendously made and i'm open to that interpretation changing but every decision here feels counter to what I would ex- not expect because that makes it sound like I just don't want my expectations being subverted. It's right. not what I would have done. Like well, even the way the like I the thing that like crystallizes it for me, and I know I'm probably nitpicking a fairly minor point, but like that nitpick away, dude. Kung Lao meeting being in the basement of a restaurant drives me fucking crazy sure, and the but... reason for that is that's not an interesting way to integrate this mythology into a real world i guess but i think that i think that it's more like they're staying there like that was like a ceremonial thing because kung lao is about to go to the tournament i don't think they're there all the time hanging out i think that that's like a safe place that they have to stay the night and do their prayers and right. send kung i mean lao off i safely. guess but like <laughs> I don't, think they, I don't think the White Lotus Society is operating out of the basements of restaurants sure, in Macau like, all the time. Why, but why would that be? The, the, they would just have somewhere for that. That's not a restaurant basement. This isn't a fucking legion. Like, I don't understand. Well, I'm saying that is they do have a place and it's that place. I don't know. But I don't why? know. They're a secret, but they're a secret society, dude. What do you want them to do? They're a humble secret society. Who who walk around outside very obviously in Shaolin robes. Right. Yeah. You can't say it's a secret society. It's like they're the most conspicuous motherfuckers alive. Nobody I mean, nobody batted an eye when Kung Lao was walking around, you know? I don't know. Like like I said, I, I understand if it's nitpicking or whatever, but it's just like I get it. No, man. Like uh it might, it might also be budgetary constraints. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean if it's a but it still doesn't need to be in a restaurant though. Sure. You can you, you, you sure saw it in a lot of warehouses last season. Should have been in the basement of a karaoke bar, if anywhere. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know. It's just Just not click not clicking for you yet. If I were just going about my life 
and not doing a podcast and watched this, I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I would not watch the rest of it. Didn't 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 rope you in. It did not. <laughs> okay. So so what I'm not I'm not putting you on the spot like, oh, you think you can do better. That's not what I'm doing here. I, I absolutely do not. <laughs> Um, but like, I do think that there's some credit needs to be given and you kind of gave it some to this idea of like, like they, they didn't bring Liu Kang in, in the first season at all. Right. And we had the, the Liu Kang, the 95 Liu Kang, like that was a Liu Kang story, right? In the 95 movie. Um, they didn't want to repeat just the same Liu Kang story over again. So I think that they did something interesting in kind of reversing the right. role kind of like giving him like a tragedy that has like shaken him and made him not want to fight for earth anymore. And now he's fighting on Outworld. I think that's a very cool idea. What would you have done differently? Well, what if you I, wanted that, to tell a Luke Kang story? That's when I said earlier that it has interesting ideas. That's the one thing where I'm like, Oh, okay. Okay. Like, I don't hate everything that's going on. My biggest problem with it is how it's being presented to me. Right. Right. Like I, I don't hate the ideas but the way it's getting to them is what I don't like. I'm open to them doing the story this way because you're right. We have a b billion trillion other versions of, of the story. that existing story. And I'm open to it changing. But I there's a fine line between that and being a fan of how that is being done. Right. And that's more where my issue lies. Okay. Is that I'm not a particularly big fan of how this is being presented and established rather than the ideas being fundamentally bad. I think that's fair. The reason I was asking is because I actually like I think it I think the idea of Liu Kang turning and fighting for our world is cool. I don't like the way it was. I honestly don't really like the way it was presented with him just being a drunk picking fights in bars because because he lost his fiance in a daring daylight robbery by some dudes while listening to the song relaxed by frankie goes to hollywood i think that's just man it's a really grim it's i kind of had this issue i think this is what i was thinking about when i told you before we started legacy that i don't that i that it feels like a really grim universe this is just a little mm, to me you know this is just a little too far i don't think they had to like make him an alcoholic drunk stumbling over outside the bar telling kung lao he's gonna shove his hat up his ass and saying fuck every other word it's it's definitely i actually gone. didn't i didn't hate the wow what has happened to us that he has sorry what has happened to us <laughs> um i <laughs> luke hang was like my favorite aspect of this thing okay interesting however i'm willing to concede the point that like if it wants to do grim, dark, it feels like it's only going halfway in certain ways. However, I'm also willing to say that I'm not especially interested in, like, uh, I'm trying to say something that's not going to make people yell at me because I was going to make a joke, but I'm not going to do that. Actually, sure, I will. I was gonna. The do joke it. I was gonna make was saying I'm not that interested in Zack Snyder's Mortal Kombat. This is yes. This um, is kind of this is feeling this very feels like that. <laughs> Right. Um, I mean, there's a scene where Zack Snyder good at having good ideas and then executing on them in a way that I hate. So, um, OK. All right. Maybe that's what that is. Um, also, I haven't seen that many Zack Snyder movies, so I'm not willing to defend that he always has good ideas. No, no we've, look, we've <laughs> talked about Zack Snyder enough on this show. We don't need to go. Be, I think everyone knows where we stand on Zack Snyder. It's cool. Uh, but you're, but yeah, like there's a scene where Liu Kang in this fucking bar, like he, he goes so far as to like basically murder these people because they were singing a karaoke song that reminds him of his dead fiance. And then he's getting his face just bashed in, like cratered in on and a And he's like, table. keep punching me. <laughs> like, I hate being alive. Just continue to murder me, please. Yeah. Like. And that's sad. It's fucking fucked up and it's grim. And like, it's not that there's no place for that in this story. Um, right, but he's blaming Kung Lao and the Shaolin for all of the shitty stuff that happened to him after he decided to leave. You know, it's yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Life's complicated. That's what happens, right? Like, yeah. People, is it? What do you mean? Yes, I know it is. Oh, <laughs> you're not giving me. You're not giving me breaking news here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> um. <laughs> 
It just felt the super, I don't know, Mortal Kombat rebirthy to me. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't love that either. So. Right. I am open to being proven otherwise. However, I'm not excited about this. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that you're going to find some stuff in here that you like, kind of like the first season. We're not we're not talking conquest here, but which uh, was all th- gold all the time. Obviously. Which is yes, yes. I mean, all killer, no filler. I think there's going to be stuff in here you like. I th- I don't re- again. I don't remember. I don't remember. I've watched it once. It was a while ago. I, I have not retained anything. I might as well be watching this for the first time. But we're going to get to explore characters like Kenshi, which is going to be cool. We're going to revisit the the Scorpion and Sub-Zero, the Shirai Ryu and Lin Kuei rivalry. We're going to get a lot of more backstory to that. You know, I, I believe that this Sub-Zero that we saw fighting for Earthrealm is Kwai Lang. It's not Bihan. So there's going to be there's going to be some cool stuff. And uh, I'm going to work my damnedest to change your mind about Casper Van Dien as Johnny Cage. Yeah, look, I'm open to that not being his fault per se, but I really, really did not like it. <laughs> we're gonna do a we're gonna we're gonna do a deep dive once we get to a Johnny Cage episode here. Anyway, man, sorry this didn't uh fucking like I impress mean, yeah, it, you. It's what it is, right? Like I'm not sure. too too like concerned or anything. Um it, you know, we'll see we'll see what happens, but as a first impression, I'm not you know, like over the moon, but I wasn't really last time either. So sure. It is what it is. And don't worry, man, we're going to be getting back to conquest here pretty soon. If, if you hate new things, just go back to the old <laughs> thing that you like. That's going to be a good time, dude. We're going to get to watch those together. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Please say yes. I like how we're already like, please say it's fun. <laughs> let's just think, let's just think about that other thing we'll be doing and not the thing that we're currently doing. I mean, it's kind of what we do every time. <laughs> Like, halfway through Defenders of the Realm, we're like, cannot wait for this to be over. What's next? <laughs> Defenders wait to of the Realm was like, a, that was a di- bit of a different story. That took so long. It didn't, it was only 13 episodes. It took a long time. That's three months. <laughs> it was a long time. Well, we got, in after this one, we got four more episodes covering Legacy 2. I don't know, man. I'm kind of out of stuff to say. I mean, Prove me wrong, Kevin. <laughs> let me browse my notes here real quick. Oh, I, did t- I took notes too, but not that many. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I did have something I wanted to say about Kung Lao and his big hat, right? Yeah, you had a theory, boys, of some size? Big theory, big boys. Theory big, boys. Big, 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 big theory, boys. I really need to make that small theory lads drop. <laughs> um. Yeah, so his hat is not like a razor-rimmed murder hat like we're used to seeing. You know, it's more, more of a walking hat. It's more of a yeah. But but when he teleports to the island, he still has that same sort of straw like like woven hat. And we see him use it once in the bar where he throws it and it knocks a dude across the screen. And I think that the reason that they didn't give him a murder hat is a reference to Mortal Kombat one when all of the characters except Liu Kang had a fatality. And what Liu Kang did instead was a cartwheel and an uppercut. That was his finishing move. And the whole idea behind that was that the uh, the Shaolin don't kill people, right? Right. Same kind of thing we saw with the great Kung Lao in Mortal Kombat Conquest, that he was like resistant to killing and murdering. Like that was what his training was, you know? Uh, I think, and I just, I just think that's the reason why this Kung Lao has a, has a straw hat instead of a murder hat, because he's that makes not, sense. he's not a murderer in this they're going like back to like some pure old school mortal Kombat ideas and i think i just think that's fun well and uh he also says that he doesn't want to injure right somebody so like yeah that's decidedly not murdering they're really playing up the good boy angle of the shaolin something that the game series dropped immediately after the first game like (laughs) right away (laughs) and and never looked back on except for that time they call the game shaolin monks that was about it but they, you also murder tons of people in Shaolin Monks, so... Fair. Yeah. There's a not insignificant amount of murdering. It is mostly a game about murdering, honestly. Yeah, it's in the name. That's it. That's my small theory, lads. Okay. Just a nice just a nice little bit of, little bit of uh, Mortal Kombat S- something. I'm out of steam, dude. I'm so tired. Yeah, I, I think we're good. Let's just get out of here. Do you want to get out of here? I would love that. What do you got to plug, Corey? 
Uh, I would like to plug the other podcast that I do called They Made Another One. It's still Christmas month, so we're still doing Christmas movies over there. Um, I actually don't know which one when this comes out. We'll figure that out later. But uh, yeah, Christmas that's Christmas Evil. Christmas Evil? Yeah. What is that? Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Oh, no. Uh, we were actually going to do a Silent Night, Deadly Night movie, and I actually backed out and we did a different movie instead. Good idea. Uh, anyway, that's They Made Another on Twitter, and They Made Another One on all your podcast services, and I'm at Mr. Corey Price on Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at Final Neil. Follow my retro gaming Instagram account at Final Neil Retro. Follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at MKPodQuest. Go to our website, MKPodQuest.com. You can find links there to uh, all the podcast services so you can subscribe, rate, review. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe there. We lost a YouTube subscriber and then we gained one. So we're still at 58. <laughs> <laughs> Who went through the effort of uh, of unsubscribing? Somebody unsubscribed, and then somebody else resubscribed. Er, subscribe. We're just in purgatory over there, man. But I am catching all those videos up, so that's cool. Yeah, I think that that's it. I think that I don't need to plug anything else. We'll be back next week to talk about Mortal Kombat Legacy Episodes 3 and 4. Let me pull those titles up for you all. Kenshi's origin story begins, and Kenshi encounters Ermac in past and present. Really descriptive titles. I think Kenshi loves encountering all kinds of things. Sure he does. Past, present, future. Yeah. You know. Close encounters. Far encounters. He just loves <laughs> encounters. Random encounters when he's playing Grandia 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. I, I picked the one game that doesn't have random encounters. You can see the enemies on the screen. <laughs>